Last week I was down to my last gaming PC and since then I am now below that last gaming PC to the point where I don't have a gaming PC to sell anymore. I don't have any gaming PCs. So what I've got right here is putting together something from literal scraps. And by that, I mean this motherboard right here pulled out of a dumpster, H55M E21. And we've got for that an i7-860, which we got for 20 Aussie dollars. So we actually paid a bit of money for this. And that hopefully is going to go well with this graphics card right here, a GTX 560 Ti. And yes, that's how bad it is. I'm relying on a 720p monitor, a 19 inch, for, which I got for $10, to be able to uh, not show the, how weak this GPU is in 2020. Anyway, we've got here eight gigabytes of RAM, DDR3, we got that for $10. And of course, on any budget, it doesn't matter if it's out of a dumpster, if it's brand new, it needs some RGB bling. So we're adding a $15 Arctic Wind RGB cooler here. Then for the case, we've got this $45 Nimitz M5. So all up, this is about 125 Aussie dollars for this whole setup because we got the keyboard and mouse, which uh, was thrown in free when I did the used parts hunt of the month. If you guys haven't seen that, I'll put the link up here. But anyway, we don't even know if this stuff works and if it does work, I've still got to give it some tech yes loving, especially this motherboard and this GPU. So let's get on to seeing if this stuff works and even if we can play games on a 560 Ti at 720p resolution. So now we're ready to put some new thermal paste on this GTX 560 Ti, except one thing you'll notice is how big this uh, actual plate is here covering the GPU. And that's exactly what it is. It's actually a integrated heat spreader, just like you'd see on say for instance, a uh, 3770K or a CPU from Intel, where it's got the die underneath. The problem with taking these off is that it takes way too long. It's not worth your time at all, especially for a graphics card like this, which people virtually give away nowadays. So what we're gonna do, or what we've already done, is cleaned it down now, and then we're just gonna change the thermal paste over, which will need a lot more, because the plate's a lot bigger than a typical GPU die, and then we'll put it back together, and it should run a lot better than it did before, because the thermal paste was all crusty and dry. So now our build is complete in all its glory and we just got this together because this 24 pin here, it just barely fit and we had to install it before we installed the motherboard. And then we've got up the top there, a four pin CPU extender. And now we've got a signal and we've just got to install Windows 
and then we can move on to giving this some tech yes loving while windows is installed so speaking of windows if you guys are after a cheap windows 10 pro key license and today's video sponsor scd keys has got you covered for 15 us dollars after you use the coupon code tycsk on checkout the key shows up almost instantly and then you just grab that key copy and paste it in the activation box click ok and then you're good to go i'll put the link in the description below Look at my business keyboard. I'm a businessman. Are you a businessman? And now the PC is up and running and I've got to say it's not looking too shabby, especially for the budget that we've got here. And one thing I didn't know was this HP mouse here is actually made by Logitech. So I that's just, I don't know, one thing I never knew. So what we've got right here, we can see it, 768p. That is the resolution. So I'm guessing it's about half as taxing as 1080p. So hopefully this gaming PC, once our games are downloaded, will give us some smooth frame rates. But what we're gonna do now is quickly tune up the PC and then we're gonna report back and give you guys the FPS figures. So after testing out a few games, I was actually pleasantly surprised with this PC. Fortnite being, of course, the main title there because it's what everyone on a low budget looks for on a PC. They're like, can it run Fortnite and what FPS? And now with this included monitor, this little 720 or 768p ASUS monitor, it actually gave out really good FPS. And that was even with 100% resolution uh, screen scale with the low settings and epic distance. And it was quite smooth and I could even get a few frags and play the game quite well. So it really hit that mark there, getting roughly around 120 FPS. So I was kind of surprised at the same time that the 560 Ti could even get that kind of FPS. And now of course with overclocking, that's out of the question with this build because we're using a GPU with a single fan We've got a uh, CPU cooler that's not really that big. And then we've got an H55 motherboard. And then we've got the power supply, which is a Antec 350 watts. So all those things together basically scream, don't overclock me, keep me sort of running as cool as possible. Where the GPU did go into the 80 degree region, which I know the Fermi cards, which is the code name for the GTX 500 series, they did run hot by default. And so this one getting into 80 degrees, I guess is kind of normal for this GPU architecture. There was a lot of uh, toaster jokes going on back in the day with the uh, Fermi architecture and rightfully so, but nonetheless, it could play the games quite well. CSGO was absolutely no problems getting really high FPS and it was really smooth too. But then stepping over to F1 2019, even on the very low graphics settings, we only really saw uh, somewhere in the mid 40s on the average FPS. So 
not really the best result, but still playable even on this little budget machine right here. Uh, Doom Eternal, I tried installing that and tried booting it up, but it just basically flat out didn't work at all. So there was no way around that. Anyway, that aside, what we did here today was put together something really cheap and it ended up working fine. And the main thing was the motherboard for me. Someone basically tossed that out and they upgraded to the latest and greatest stuff, but that motherboard was still absolutely fine. After I gave it some tech yes loving, that thing came up like looking almost like brand new. I was really impressed with um, some of these parts that come through and they're used and they don't show any real signs of being worn that hard. And so that's the main thing and the main gist of doing a used price performance is getting these parts in and saying, hey, this is a really good score and then turning it into a gaming PC that gives out really good FPS for its intended purpose, which in this case is a Fortnite gaming PC. Though what you can probably tell by now is that I really enjoy doing this cookie cutter stuff where I've just got to put together a PC. I absolutely love doing this kind of stuff as well as just seeing the performance of some of these parts where in this case the i7-860 is surprisingly still really good even to this day as we saw with that Fortnite FPS. It's capable of getting some really high FPS and in fact I'd prefer this over say for instance an i5-2400 and of course if you've got better gear for it you can even overclock this CPU and get much more performance. But we didn't overclock here today, as we said before, due to the limitations. Though, speaking of the i7-860, this ties perfectly into today's question of the day, which comes from MGL, and they ask, hello, X3430 and RX584 gigabyte can combine any good? So to answer this question quite bluntly, I do think it's a pretty poor combo in 2020 where I recently took a look at the i5-2400 and i5-3470 in a separate video, and I'll put the link up there, where I found those two CPUs to be getting phased out in 2020. And basically, the X3430 is an i5-750 equivalent. It's a Xeon equivalent. So combining that with an RX-580, it's basically gonna be a bottleneck on the CPU side of things, where I'd recommend getting at least an X3470, which is similar to the CPU here. It's a Xeon equivalent of the i7-860. And so you can overclock that thing, especially if you can overclock it, you get some really good performance and it will pair nicely with that RX 580 in 2020. Hope that answers that question. And of course, I hope you guys enjoyed today's real budget micro build. We're honestly playing on 720p. I could still enjoy uh, Fortnite on this thing. It was a really enjoyable experience. And I remember back in the day, I'd be playing games at like 480p or whatever those real terrible resolutions were back in the day. And I still enjoyed games back then, even with low choppy FPS. So this thing right here, it's giving out good FPS, 720p monitor. And more importantly, if you're on a budget, you can still enjoy PC games. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Also, if you've stayed this far and you haven't subbed yet and you're enjoying the content, then you know what to do. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.